All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Bobby Machado, who is currently the CEO and lead strategist at Signa Marketing and the CEO at Sector 7 Apps. Bobby, how you doing? Awesome. Doing great. No, thank you, Timmy, for having me on. I'm uh, excited to, to have our conversation today. Of course. Yeah, I'm excited too, man. Thanks for coming on the show. And we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, what I like to do for fun is really usually around action sports. So um, I grew up racing motocross for a good while. Um, after I was about 22 years old, I was like, yeah, I got to got to think about plan B here and, and think about career wise and stuff. Um, and so, so yeah, I, a lot of times I'm around, uh, doing action sports with motocross, skateboarding. Um, if, if I'm in Flagstaff, then snowboarding is always fun during the winter and stuff like that. So anything that's, uh, connected with adrenaline like that is kind of my thing for sure. Okay. Okay. There we go. There we go. And tell us a bit more about Signa marketing and sector seven apps. Yeah, so uh, Signa Marketing, actually, that started very organically um, and just kind of tied to my motocross days. So when I was racing dirt bikes, that's in high school, I learned how to code websites. And so as a means for having some income on the side, I was building websites and then racing dirt bikes. And so when I stopped racing dirt bikes, that's when I got into web design full time. And then from there, starting in 2000, uh, 2009, 2010, I got into the online marketing side of things. And so, um, once I had enough experience, then 2014 is when I officially launched Signa Marketing. And so we've been around since, uh, 2014. Um, and we have always been full service in that sense, very cross disciplined um, and boutique-ish, but, um, these days we really tend to focus on three core areas. So that would be, uh, search engine optimization, both local and national SEO, um, and then the paid media side of things. Um, and then lastly, website development, specifically more on the user experience design and conversion rate optimization. But that's kind of like the core services that we we tend to focus on. Uh, and so that's on the Signal marketing side. Now, Sector 7 apps, that again started very organically in 2017. Um, a lot of our clients that you know want websites from us, at the time they were thinking, oh, well, you guys build websites, so you can just do an app too, right? And it's like, no, those are completely different <laughs> disciplines. But um, we saw a lot of opportunity and a good friend of mine, um, he's always been a full stack uh, developer. And so he's always been wanting to push to kind of partner and, and uh, have a development company. And so um, so that's when we said, okay, let's just let's just start doing that. And so we started working with um, some of Cygnus clients on the sector side on developing mostly internal applications. And, and to this day, that's kind of what we focus on. It's not so much on commercial um, sites or like if someone wanted to build like the next Instagram or something like that, it's more like uh, internal tools for companies that have specific requirements. And uh, that's really what we focus on. I gotcha. I gotcha. And what type of specific requirements would a company kind of have? Yeah. So no, great question. So of course, nowadays there's a lot of tools to integrate different applications, but the thing is that a lot of companies, their infrastructure is still very fragmented. For example, they started with um, a specific pain point and then they found a solution out there in, in the form of a certain SaaS product or whatnot that would you know, solve that. But over time, you of course end up having 20, 30, 40 different tech stack tools use, used in your organization as you scale. And at that point, it's very hard to manage that. And you can use platforms, of course, like Zapier and stuff like that to integrate a lot of these um, platforms together. But a lot of times companies need something that's very simple, an admin panel or a dashboard where all this data comes together, um, or they have specific workflows where maybe those um, current SaaS products don't have them released yet, or they're just not friendly with each other. And so that's where we're able to develop interfaces that meet the requirements of their actual workflow for efficiency and to make it easy and stuff like that. And um, especially with you know, companies where maybe the, the training of new hires is kind of, you know, tedious or it can be kind of difficult and stuff like that. They're always looking for ways to make their, their user experience on their platforms easier for even a new hire to be able to come in and, and kind of intuitively already understand, oh, okay, this is the workflow. This is kind of how to complete X, Y, Z processes, et cetera. And so, so it's fun. Yeah. Because I mean, 
basically it's getting into the nitty gritty of their actual infrastructure, understanding their workflow and being able to provide solutions on that front. I gotcha. I gotcha. Well, tell us a bit more about your motivation. What really gets you up and keeps you going every day? Well, uh, I'd say it's changed over, over uh, the years. I think I feel like almost every two years it changes because at first, say for example, like when I first started Signal, well, of course I was very just focused on getting that launched and, and that was very motivating because it's also a lot of fun. And I've always enjoyed business building in that sense of really being in the trenches in that sense. Um, but over time, you know, that motivation, as far as like what the motiv motivating factor is changes. Like for example, right now I'm, I'm 34. Um, for, for me personally, I've started to think of like, okay, well, if I want to have a family and kids and kind of be more stable on that side, you know, what are the things that I need to do on, on my personal level to be able to have, um, a really good a chance at that in terms of it being very stable and successful in that sense for me personally. Um, and so, yeah, before I'd be motivated of like, okay, it's just me and Bobby wanting to scale these businesses. Now it's more about like, okay, how, how are these businesses running on their own? Are they um, valuable even from, um, from a business standpoint of, of aside from me, you know, do they have their systems and processes for selling on their own, fulfilling on their own, et cetera. Um, and that's very difficult to get to in terms of, of getting to businesses that are actually true businesses where they're, they're actually machines that churn on their own, not dependent on, on the CEO or at least the owner anymore. And so that's where my focus has been mostly now. It's just actually, you know, building real, real businesses in that sense that, that run on their own. Um, that's what's very motivating. And so that's why, of course, my viewpoint now is, is different because I'm thinking about if there's uh, a gap in the processes or, or if we have, you know, not the right people on the certain, on the team and et cetera, like that, if that tends to happen, those types of things need to be addressed for, for at least the outcome that I seek in the future, you know? I gotcha. I gotcha. That is um an interesting observation that, you know, as like a lot of people would be like, find your why, find your why, find your why, but your why changes. Like you just said, yeah. and every, every two to three years, like you may have a different why, like before it was just to build the business. Now it's like, what is my future family going to look like? What do I want my future life with my wife and kids to look like, whatever it may be. And so I just think that's a really interesting point and love that you're kind of in touch with that. Yeah, no, I, I think um, probably more so the last two to three years, and to be honest, I think it was probably even the COVID stuff that it just puts so much strain that it just, I think for me personally, I think um, the strain of COVID um, in terms of like losing half your client base, like that same day type of deal, because our, our, our client base on Cigna, it's a mixture of B2C and B2B businesses. So our B2B business went up in COVID, but our B2C business was like, it paused that day. And of course we weren't going to be we were understanding, we weren't going to say, oh, clients, like you, you have to, like, it's the agreement. You have to continue. But we understood like it's COVID, like this is a different climate here. So of course we'll, we'll work with you guys and stuff like that. But it was, it was different. And so I think it opened up a lot of gaps or just also made you have time to think about things, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think a lot of times we we're so busy with the day to day of of tackling all our to do lists, um, and we don't have enough time to kind of just sit and think of what do we actually want in the future and stuff like that. And you know, for me, if you ask me my my why question when I was sixteen, I wanted to be a professional motocross racer, and I was lit literally like, if I'm not racing dirt bikes, like I don't even want to be here. It was like yeah. so do or die. It was crazy, you know, and so. Um, and then that of course went into business where it's like do or die. And it's, it's great. Like if you're running that, that high, but, um, but, I, it, but it changes and everyone's different too. You see, I've seen some people that are like 60 years old and still on that same high of the same why. And I've seen other people evolve. And, um, and so I think for me, what I've learned in the past couple of years is more of just kind of being in tune with that and just being really conscious of it and kind of just having that internal conversation too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's, um, that's cool, man. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. Now we're going to jump into your dreams 
and goals. So you've talked to us a little bit about what you want to see in your business, but tell us about your vision for your business and your life. So um, I'd say really my, my what would be successful so successful for me now for sure is is having two stable businesses that are true true businesses they have value to them they run their on their own um uh literally they there are organizations separate from me as an owner that would be that's really the goal and and success for me on that standpoint um and and there's a, a second part i think to this question that i think i i missed uh just vision about your for your business and then vision for your life there you go yeah and so uh, when it comes to life, to be honest, all that is one for me. I, I know that maybe for some, uh, there's, I know there's different trains of thought on this where it's like work-life balance and these things are separate. Um, for me, it actually works better having it all integrated just because um, in reality for me, that's kind of how it works it, is, is that it is all kind of integrated as much as I would like to not have to do maybe a certain phone call at 8 p.m. because I'm eating. Sometimes it has to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just part of business and mechanics of it. Um, and so I think just making sure that that's in control to where business doesn't take over your life uncontrollably. That's where the anxiety and the hardcore like of like, I think the balance thing comes into place. Um, but for me, I think my dream, to be honest, is very basic of just having a balanced uh, company that works within my life and I've still have enough flexibility to be able to um, me mentally just have that stable, you know, not have, you know, the crazy, crazy anxiety peaks and stuff like that. Cause I think one thing that does come with entrepreneurship, especially when you're scaling is that if you don't have certain systems in place or you don't have the right uh, team members in the right spots or in terms of even certain positions that are maybe aren't even filled yet, um, it can cause a lot of stress. And, and then that's what you'll see. Some people maybe just pull the plug on the whole thing. And they're like, you know what? I don't want to do this business anymore, et cetera. It, it takes over my life. Or you can kind of just put solutions to that so that you can enjoy the good parts of the business um, in a way that works with your life. And so for me, that's the ultimate goal is just being able to, to have that whole machine, as you will, um, working within my life. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. And I like your perspective on it's all kind of one a, because it is one, it's your life. Like it, you're spending your time <laughs> doing stuff and it's like all your time, if that makes sense. But yeah. I also heard somebody recently talk about the fact that balance isn't a goal to be achieved. It's like an act to be pursued. And yeah. so it's not like you get to a point where you're balanced and you stay there. It's like a balancing act where at some points it's going to be more on the business side. At other points, like maybe when your kid is first born, you're probably going to spend the first six weeks of that kid's life heavily with that kid and yeah. not as much in the business. And so it's a balancing act is something that stuck out to me um, from what you said and what I learned yeah, no, I think that's, that's, that's very true. I think even when you're explaining that, that, that concept, um, for me, it kind of clicked into, um, the whole idea of like healing. So a lot of, I, I've been around a lot of people that, um, at times maybe are more in touch with like the, the aspect of emotional healing or, or, or parts like that. And everyone has their own experiences with that. But I think that one thing I've had, even with conversations internally with family and stuff like that is I've seen a difference with some people that see being healed as the outcome compared to like the activity of, of getting healed in that way. And, um, and sadly, I feel like I've seen some people being on this process of wanting to be healed, but like their whole life until the day they die. And instead of seeing it as like, okay, well, this is just an activity to be healthy, whether it's emotionally, mentally, et cetera, rather than an actual destination destination, because, I mean, to be frank, we're always going to have things that happen to us and they're going to impact us differently. And it could even happen when you're 89 years old and you wouldn't even expect it. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, no, I would completely agree where it's more of an activity for sure, ra rather than an actual destination. There we go. There we go. Well, what are the top one to two skills that you need to develop right now to make your dreams come true? I think the ones that I continue to focus on to, to continue getting better and better at is um, 
definitely uh, communication in terms of uh, communication with uh, with on all on all aspects of, of business, whether it's internal team members or with clients, vendors, etc. Um, because really, at the end of the day, the better you can get with in terms of communication and relationships within those aspects, your business does grow. It's kind of, it has to, like, there's no way you can scale a business without being able to have the proper relationships, the proper communication. Um, it, it's just, it's just impossible to, to grow a big business like that. I mean, firstly, having proper communication, those relationships takes trust and to build trust takes time. And you can also destroy trust in like a half a second. Um, and so you got to really understand how to manage those conversations, how to be very well at communicating, have having relationships, um, et cetera, for, for even your personal goals to flirt, to, to flourish, um, when it comes to business. And so in terms of skill sets, I feel like that's always going to be, I'm always going to be a student of that and always just finding ways to, to learn further and further about it. Um, and really interesting enough too, over time, I've even got into a lot of, um, read about neuroscience and psychotherapy just to even understand relationships relationships in those ways because um i've seen it definitely make a lot of uh, of a great impact whether it's my personal relationships with family or coworkers or vendors or clients um it's all different types of relationships but the better that you can kind of understand even biologically how people react to certain things um, the words that you're, they're, that you're using on what they could actually mean to another person, et cetera, like that. Um, those all have effects. And so just being prepared and being a student of it is kind of where my focus is at, um, on that, on those fronts, just cause I know that for me to attain the goals that I want, I certainly won't be able to do it by myself. I feel that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's funny. I heard Elon Musk say this, he was like, if you had all the money in the world, but you were isolated on an island and you couldn't use it, it wouldn't mean anything. Right. So money, businesses, cars, real estate, all the things that give us like our financial freedom only have value if there are other people in the world. Yeah. Which means at the core of everything is like relationships with people. So that communication factor is extremely important. Like you said, curious, have you ever read how to win friends and influence people? That one, uh, I haven't, I have, I've scanned through it. I've never sat down to do a full read on it. And so it's on my, it's on my list for sure. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just recently finished uh zero to one from by Peter Thiel, of course. Um, and, uh, and then of course the Steve jobs biography, the thing is that those books are ones that I, for me, my style is like, I have, I read it once and then I have to read it like two, three, four more times to really like grasp details. Cause there's a ton of, nuggets on those but for it to actually be of, of like value to actually execute on it for me i gotta i gotta really comb through them again and stuff like that so but yeah this, the other one you mentioned right there is definitely on my list too i love it yeah there we go zero to one is actually on my list i had a podcast nice. guest come on they had also just read that book and they were shocked that i hadn't and were like you have to <laughs> yes yeah no that one i think it's it's super um it's very eye opening, and f for me, just because I have read, I've, I've, for me, it's like if, when I find a subject, I end up getting obsessed with it and go into it like hardcore until I feel like I'm a jack of all trades type of deal with it enough with it, and so really interesting enough with that book, um, there is a lot of, um, I wouldn't say like hardcore relationship talking, but just. Um, more of like the mental aspect and the emotional aspects of entrepreneurship and with relationships, specifically with Peter Thiel, there's discussions there with, you know, VCs and raising money and stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, no, it's a really, really good book. Um, it's, it's one that I'm rereading right now again. And so for me, I help, what helps me is read, read, uh, listening to them through audible. Um, yeah. just because, yeah, for me, it's just, it's easier that way. Then I'll, I'll list, I'll listen to a certain nugget and pause it, go back 15 seconds <laughs> yep. listen again and be like, Oh dude. Okay. And then it's cool because sometimes you can kind of match it with real life experiences that maybe you've gone through that maybe you had a gray area with. And so it's helped me kind of, kind of find patches to those where maybe in the past I went through a business situation. And I said, man, you know what, this is very similar to what he's describing. 
and um and i'm able to kind of learn from you know the outcomes from what they share in the book and stuff like that so yeah it's i highly recommend it that's for sure gotcha there we go i'll have to have to buy it right after this awesome well what are the highest impact daily actions that will tick the needle forward towards your dreams and goals i would say um I think that being, so we always talk about consistency mm -hmm. and, um, and the behavior, basically really it's consistency of, of our behaviors. So if say our behavior is to get up in the morning and always check up, check email from seven to nine, like that's a behavior slash action item and stuff. Um, and so maybe if you're doing that consistently, you'll never get behind on email so, as a, as an idea. But I think that, um, from what I have observed since the COVID days till now, um, because everything has changed so much with rem remote working, et cetera, I've seen um, that emotionally, a lot of people react different to different situations. Like some people are okay working by themselves. Others are like, I need to be around people. It gives me energy, et cetera, et cetera. And so the reason why I bring that up is because to be consistent, um, a lot of times emotionally you'll see inconsistent inconsistency from people because their emotions are going like this some and for different reasons maybe they don't feel they're like i i can't work right now i just can't get my head in it and so because of that emotion it derails them they don't end up working the two three five hour session that they need to do for that day and now they got now they're behind for the week or what like that yeah and so um so i really i think that um being consistent, but just really a kind of understanding yourself of how you operate and be able to set up the right environment so that you can be consistent. Because I know a lot of people that want to be consistent, but, but have trouble doing it because their environment is kind of, is not suited for them. They can't get in the zone and actually, you know, do uh, get into flow in that sense and stuff like that. And so I would say that's one, one recommendation that's for sure is, you know, uh, find out what, works with you for you uh, specifically um, so that you can be consistent with, with your action items and stuff, what, whatever the action items actually need to be. Uh, but I have seen emotions just take control uh, a lot. And I think to me, I don't know why, but I feel like since COVID days, it's, it sticks out like a th sore thumb for me when I see behavior from whether it's even clients, coworkers, vendors, et cetera. Um, and at the same time, I've, I've learned to kind of be a little bit more aware of that too. Um, to, just to kind of understand like, like what's actually behind, uh, the behavior, you know, if you see inconsist inconsistency from someone and that, it might not just be because they're lazy or something like that, but also just because their emotions may be hijacking them in some way too. Yeah. I think that's, <laughs> that's such an important thing to realize. It's like, understand yourself, set up your environment so you can be consistent and then be kind to yourself. Yeah. when you are inconsistent because i feel like a lot of when emotions hijack is like something bad happens in the workday or you wake up on the wrong side of the bed and you start judging yourself for yeah. like feeling bad <laughs> and then it just makes you feel worse yeah that's why that's why they say it's like it's a good practice not to use the word the word should with yourself yeah. because when you say should it implies something negative mm -hmm. like right off the bat and um and so yeah you got to I mean, um, I, I forgot who was the person I heard, heard, um, say this, but basically they said, like, if you spoke to yourself, if, if you spoke to your friends, the way you speak to yourself, you know, ask yourself, would you actually, actually even have friends? Yeah. Because, you know, if you're, if you're talking to yourself negatively 24 seven or not having that self-compassion, um, if you're talking that way, that way to your friends, your friends would be like, I'm not going to tolerate this, like peace, I'm out. Um, and so to, at, at the end of the day, just be aware of that, you know, and it's, and it's like, it takes practice too, because if, if we've all been doing it for a long time, depending on the person, um, it's a habit, it's kind of like go to, you know, and, and so you got to just at least start taking it at least and start chipping away at it just yeah. over time, just being conscious, conscious of it for sure. Absolutely. What character trait? do you most need to develop right now to make your dream life come true? Um, 
So I, I think the the one that I've been focusing on, and this goes to the the skill set, but when it comes to character trait, is just being highly highly conscious of um of or or, or I'll say it like this: being very um objective, like removing emotion and just being super objective. Um, that's that's been in, in, important because um, if you talked to even like 24 year old Bobby, it, it it's like hardcore reactive. Like if something's presented to me, I would just react to it. And I wouldn't, even, I would probably react to it before even realizing how I reacted to it type of deal. And so, um, so when it comes to character, I think just continuing um, the process of being very conscious of, of taking in whatever happens to you in the world. And then, and it's just, depending on the situation, of course, but a lot of times you could just sit with it and kind of process it first between before under, uh, before deciding how to react to it or how to more, in other words, how to respond to it rather than react. Um, and I, and I've just been focusing on being very conscious about that because responding means that you've thought it, you've processed it, you thought it through, and then you responded to it. React is like fight or flight mode you 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 didn't even think about this yet. You just reacted to it, type of deal. Yep. And um, it can work in your it can work out sometimes, but a lot of times you're gonna end up reacting in a way that maybe you didn't want to react to. And it, this doesn't mean even this could even mean like even in uh, doing a sale or something like a sale or something like that. Like if you had uh, a novice salesperson and they're just reacting to the prospect and and not thinking that stuff through, they may low, you know, throw their cells out, or they may lose a deal just by saying the wrong wording because they didn't just take a, a time to pause, take a deep breath, process like how they want to respond to an objection or something like that, you know. And so, so again, I'd say that's um, something I'm just continue to be conscious of, and and it's of course it's, I I tend to be a student of it because. Um, I, I don't know if there's a grandmaster of that yet. I think we're all humans. Yeah. <laughs> there's masters out there, but I don't know if there's a grandmaster out there. So, well, as I, I tend to be a student of it for sure. Are you a chess fan? I honestly, I've never played chess in my life, but <laughs> for some reason, like I was, uh, I was watching a YouTube video the other day and they were talking about chess. And I was like, dude, I should, I should just learn how to play chess. Cause like, if you could get crazy good at learning, like, eight, nine, 10 moves ahead of someone, like being able to see that, that takes a lot of mental processing to be able to do that. And I was like, dude, that's probably such a really good mental exercise that you could probably apply to other aspects of life, you know? And so, but yeah, no, but yeah, I'm curious as to, to what your thoughts are or what, what were you thinking with the chess item? Oh, you just said grandmaster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the highest, the highest, like rating you can get in chess and so it was just yeah. interesting that you used grandmaster but i agree like chess is like you have a you have a move that shocks you and if yeah. you don't take the time to be objective and gather yourself it definitely apply i feel like most high performance things apply yeah. to being able to be objective and kind of exercise self-control in that sense yeah no that that definitely for sure um one of the so full disclaimer like I, 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 the reason why I listen to to books is because reading takes a lot of work for me. Like, like, and so one of the books I've been reading, it's just taken for, it's taken a long time, but I'm, I told myself, I'm just going to read this one and not listen to it is Ray Dalio's uh, book principles. And, um, you picked that uh, one to read. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, the thing is like, if for true readers, it's probably like, not an easy read, but it's not a hard read either. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just hard all around just because I just, I don't know. I just, reading is not my my thing. But the thing is that um, he talks a lot about being very objective and just being really unemotional, not 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 dismissing emotions, but when it comes to like um, uh, certain eyeshot items with work or how do you want to uh, react to certain situations that happen in your life and stuff like that, to be very objective for him specifically, he's been meditating for 40 plus years and that's helped him be very objective and kind of look down on himself to be able to, to, to figure out a situation. So if he's going through something, you know, 
almost kind of like remove yourself from it so that you're not emotional and look down on the situation objectively so that you can kind of work through making the best decision possible. And then of course he goes through his principles of how he makes those decisions. But, um, but yeah, being objective is, is, uh, it, I wouldn't say it's easy. It takes practice. Um, but that's one of the big things I've been taking from his book for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I heard that's a pretty thick book. Am I right in that or? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like, uh, I mean, it's not like, uh, the big Harry Potter ones or anything like that. Yeah. Where like, when I was a kid, I was like, dude, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, there's no way, like, like my brother and everyone, they, they can get really into it. But I just, I just, I would, I would make decisions in school when I see like a book that's like really easy. I'm like, okay, I could, and then the words are back. I'm like, ah, okay, I, I could do this one. Yeah. But if it's like a big, I'm like, dude, I'm not going to go on this journey. Um, But, but principles is decent. It's not, it's not too crazy. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, if there were one or two people that you could meet right now. And this could be a specific person or a type of person. And they'd really help you take the next step towards these dreams and goals. Who would they be and how would they help? Uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, no, that's a really good question. I, I think, um, I mean, I think I would like to meet Elon Musk more kind of just to kind of understand um more of his upbringing because I feel like that's still kind of gray for the public um because because to kind of get someone that's wired that way um you got to really understand your childhood <laughs> like you know how you came up and so I would I would love the opportunity to kind of learn more of that that front um that that would be really interesting because um he is wired differently he is able to handle stress um, and it, like in immense amounts. And I don't know, it's just, it, that's just a completely different world. Like, and I think a lot of people, I, I mean, of course on Twitter, you'll see a lot of people like, you know, going after him for being a billionaire and stuff like that. And a lot of billionaires get attacked for this type of stuff. At the same time, it'd be really interesting because they, they, they don't live the life that we do. <laughs> like their life is, in a lots of ways, completely different in terms of what their day looks like. Um, and so, yeah, maybe, maybe they get a lot of stuff done for them. Like, like maybe normal stuff. Like I'm sure Elon doesn't do his own laundry. Maybe he does. I don't know, but maybe he doesn't. I doubt it. But the thing is, is that, but his problems and the things that he's having to, to tackle on a day-to-day -day business, day-to-day -day basis are completely different. And so I'd be really interested to kind of just understand what that even looks like. Even just shadowing that would be really interesting because you would just be able to learn a lot. Um, that's why I'm really envious of all, all, any of the YouTubers that have been able to follow him. Cause I'm like, dude, that's so cool. Like just be able to witness how he operates. You're going to learn something there, you know? Yeah. Um, and you find this even with um, people that have followed even like Gary Vee and stuff like that, where they talk about his pace and, and stuff like that. And, um, so one thing that's also very interesting to me, and I'll, the reason why I bring this up is because like, even if you think about like someone like very eccentric, like Gary V compared to someone like Bill Gates, I mean, uh, they're just very different on, on how they speak their, their pace and stuff like that. They're just, they're just different. And so, um, so I'd just be interested to kind of see what their days look like. Um, and how they, how they operate, because I think right now in this world, we're kind of always seeking, like, what's the, what's the process to, to be successful and stuff like that. And you've seen tons of people do it in several different ways, which then questions you, is there actually even a process or is it actually just a set of characteristics or anything like that? And so I really don't think there's a hardcore rule book. Um, I think that people are just wired differently and, and some, uh, also are just born in different, um, uh, starting points. Yep. And so, you know, even like with Elon Musk, he'll, he gets, um, bashed for, you know, coming from a rich family and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I think with the dad, with the mind and stuff like that, but the thing at the same time, this dude doesn't have a connection with his dad right now. And, to, and today's like, what, what he's like 50 or something now. Yeah. And so you got to know that guy, that has to screw with him mentally in some way. Like, I mean, that has to affect with, uh, make an effect some sort of way with him. And so 
Um, so I don't know, for me, it would just be really interesting to kind of, um, learn about their lives in a, in a deeper sense. That's the only reason why even job, uh, Steve jobs book is really interesting in terms of his biography because they dive into his childhood and a lot of his behavior when he's running Apple and stuff totally makes sense. They, di they dive into his relationships romantically and stuff like that. And a lot of his behaviors, there definitely tied to his childhood upbringing and him being a, um, coming up from, from, uh, uh, being a foster kid and stuff like that too. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I think that that would be really beneficial is to, just to have those types of opportunities to, to meet them. And what I would want to attain from it, um, it, it's not that I'm looking to attain one specific thing. It's kind of more of just understanding, because mm -hmm. if I, if I, if I'm able to kind of understand even their stories, um, a lot of times I think you're able to start to see not like hardcore patterns, but you can tell, like you can kind of see patterns in, in people late in their later years and kind of understand, Oh, okay. Well, they probably behavior behave X, Y, Z way right now because of certain, the way they were brought up in their childhood or their environment as, as a childhood, et cetera. And so, yeah, I think, you know, people like Elon Musk or someone like Bill Gates would be interesting to, to have a, a an opportunity to, to learn more from them and kind of have just more of a intimate conversation in that sense too. There we go. There we go. Elon Musk. And then you said Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Yeah. Cause that one. So his Netflix series is pretty interesting. I think it's like three episodes. Um, and, and weirdly enough, this happened that those came out like two years before the, the Jeffrey Epstein thing mm. and all that. But but the thing is that, um, yeah, his upbringing there is pretty interesting. And you can, I think at the end of the day too, like um, a lot of people will attack like, okay, there's, they, they claim they're self-made billionaires and stuff like that. But the thing is, in my opinion, even just to get to a point of making a billions, it's almost like you have to have a lot of things happen the right way um, early on. And you have to be the type of person to actually execute on them. Cause I mean, there's a lot of kids that are born into rich families that don't do anything uh, in terms of like wanting to build an empire or whatever like that. It kind of comes down to the person if they actually wanted to do that anyways, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, it's like Bill Gates, like, yeah, he was born in, he was born in a very nice family. Like they didn't have to worry about money or anything like that, but this kid was really interested in programming and he got obsessed with it and then excelled in it where he started getting uh, contracts with Paul Allen and stuff like that. And so, um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting stuff because I feel like a lot of things have to kind of click to be able to see those type of outcomes for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, I think it's just so interesting when people, because I think there is a certain type of person you have to execute, you have to get lucky, you have to have some things happen. But then I'm like, you also just have to do different. You know, it's like when people lose it all and then get it back, it's just the most like, it's just wild. Like when people go from bankrupt to like, okay, now my net worth is 10 million again, and it's been three years. It's like, what, what do you know? What do you understand about the world that I do not? <laughs> Yeah. Well, in situations like that, especially with entrepreneurs that lose it all, it's because of experience. Like, like if they, if it took them 10 years to build something and they had that raw experience and then they made a mistake and they lost it all. It's like, the thing is that they already have the experience of 10 years of doing that to where they could make it faster. Cause they're not going to make the same mistakes. Like for example, if it took 10 years, but it's also because you've made some mishires with like management and, you know, stuff like that, that sets you back. Yep. Well, yeah, it could be faster to, to kind of rebuild because you'd be like, I know exactly who I need to hire. I know exactly what their skill sets need to be. I exactly know how to position my, my service product, et cetera. And so, so yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of times, yeah, I, I have seen that in the past where it's more of the experience too. So that, and that's why, to be honest, like, I think that if you're starting a business in your twenties and stuff like that, it's kind of cool because it's almost kind of like you're going to college or university and if after four years you fail and almost kind of, it's, it's kind of fine because you have all that experience that you would be able to take into a job anyways, which would be super valuable. Yeah. Um, or you can start all over again and actually like start for the first time, like the real time type of deal 
after, you know, your three, four, four years of, of trying it, then maybe it failed once or something like that, you know? So I don't see it as a waste for sure. If it, if it does happen and, um, cause yeah, I mean, it's that experience, you can't put a price on price tag on it at, yeah. at all, you know, at all, at all. No, for sure. I completely agree. Alex Ramosi was talking about this. He was like, you just, you get to a point where you understand what right looks like. And until you understand what right looks like, there's a high chance that you do it wrong. But once you understand it, you won't do it wrong. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah. No, he, he, he made it, he makes an excellent point with that big time. And, and, you know, one, I, one of his videos, he was explaining, um, or I think it was Layla when she was hiring, um, CERN. No, no, it was a account. I think it was a personal, yeah, a personal, um, uh, yeah, yeah. And how Alex has been kind of just going through them <laughs> like crazy, but it's because he, he was also just like, not, he was just being, he was just uh, sharing his example of like, he just didn't know what right looked like, you yeah. know, until someone was able to, uh, I think I forgot what the, how that ended, but basically someone was able to, to give, to show him like, okay, this is what you actually, what they actually look like. And, um, you know, and it's tough because sometimes you have two avenues through that. It's like you learn, you get to learn that through trial and error by doing mishires, or if you meet the right connections and in the, the right relationships where they're able to mentor you and say, oh no, if you're trying to find this type of person, okay, well, these are the requirements they're supposed to be, you should expect X, Y, Z from them, et cetera, like that. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I think that's, what's tricky sometimes is because life sometimes happens. So sometimes maybe you get lucky or you find that type of mentor, um, or you kind of just have to grind it out and go through trial and error and, and learn on the, on the job as you will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Now we're going to jump into our thriving three. Cool. Cool. And our first question is what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Um, Man, okay. So I'll just have to say probably something recent. I think zero to one probably uh, still by far has been one of the most uh, edu educational ones for me that I've actually been able to take action items from. Yeah, the zero, zero to one for sure has been it. There we go. And what's one way you like to take care of yourself? Uh, walking and running. <laughs> those, those for sure. So I, I have realized that if I... Um, if I do sports, whether it's skateboarding or if I'm lifting or anything like that, it keeps my adrenal adrenaline still way too high and I need something to completely offset that. And so for me, actually walking and, and uh, running is almost like part meditation for me because it's just it's just you get in a rhythm yeah. and uh, that's been really important. I, I for sure feel a difference that if I don't run um, in, you know, after after three days or so. I'll start to feel it in, you know, in my day to day and stuff like that. And I'll be pretty restless for sure. I got you. I got you. And what is one action step you can take right now or continue to take if you're already doing it to meet Elon Musk or Bill Gates? Uh, I would, I would probably pick Elon just because he has, a, he has really far out ideas. And so I think it'd be, it'd be fun to, yeah, I think it, that that'd be that'd be a good one to to meet with. Um, and in terms of your, your question, last question was action items. As far as what I feel like, um, just to continue to be conscious of of just being like present and being conscious of of uh, of how I'm thinking or what my action items are or anything like that, or just being very plus you or being very objective as well. Um, that I think is going to be just. Something, something that stays um, at the top of everything for sure for me. And again, I picked that for me. I, I picked that from Ray Dalio, even though it's it's uh, it's taking me time to go through the book in the evenings. But um, but yeah, I feel like that that one is probably the most important because to be, I mean, that's applicable to every aspect of life. And so, a lot of times, like honestly, what I kind of want to avoid is being 60, 70, 80 and not like already having that experience and then saying like, Oh, well, if I was thinking more clearly at the moment, I would have probably chosen this other path or whatnot. And so I, I just want to kind of reduce my risks of, of that and just being, and just try to be as conscious as possible. So that, so that I can make the best decisions um, as possible at the time. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, now we got our final series of questions. And cool. I did not send these beforehand. They get a little personal. So if you don't want to answer them, just be like, I pass. And that's totally okay. Cool. Right on. No worries. Awesome. What is one limiting belief that continues to pop up in your life, if any? Um, I don't know if this is a limiting belief, but, uh, okay. So like, I don't know if uh, it, you let me know if you resonate with this. Um, so like, imagine like you're in middle school and you walk into the, to the, to the classroom and everyone looks at you and yep. that feeling, you know? Um, and so for me, like that feeling of like all the, all the eyes are on you, but almost like in a negative way where your anxiety just goes through the roof type of deal, you know? Yeah. And so as a kid, I would get that like hardcore and now understanding when I'm, when I'm older, now I understand the anxiety comes from like this fear, like your, it's like your defenses come up, you know? And so, um, so I'd say, oh, so I, I had a brain fart. If you can re-ask that question real fast. Yeah. What is the limiting belief uh, that continues to pop up in your life? So I've realized that at times, like if I'm not conscious of it, that feeling will pop up. And what I've had a, uh, now as an adult, I tell myself, like, why do you think you're important enough to where everyone would be looking like have this type of attention on you anyways? Like I almost kind of, once I really like dove into it, like when I was younger, younger, I would realize like, uh, it's almost kind of, I took it this way that it's almost like a selfish, like thinking of like, why would all these people have this type of attention on you? Like, like who, who are you? You're just another per like a regular person, like anyone else type of deal. And so by me thinking of it that way, when I was younger, it actually removed that type of feeling. But, um, but that would, that's still a, a certain belief or a feeling that sometimes pops up at times if I'm not conscious. And so, so yeah, I would say that's one for sure. So when I think about life, we have our beliefs, we have our thoughts, we have our feelings, we have our actions, and then we have our results. So we kind of coined the feeling of walking into the room and having everybody's eyes on you. What would you say are the thoughts and beliefs behind that feeling if you had to put it in words? Oh, man. So, yeah, this would go from when I was uh, – I'll use that example. Yeah, because I would say, like, when you're a kid and I was, would – if I experienced that, it'd be like, oh, am I not wearing the right – at that time, I'd be like, am I not wearing the right clothes? Is there something – like, literally, did, did serendipity happen in a bird, like – pooped on my, on my, on my hair and I don't see it at all or some like something just like something I don't have control of in that sense, you know, did something happen like that to where I don't have control of it and all this attention's on it, you know? And so, um, yeah, as a, as a kid, you know, I would, I would feel that. And so of course, so as an adult, I kind of started to like kind of peel the, the layers behind it. Um, but yeah, as a kid, it was just very reactionary to it for sure and at that point my reaction would be to, to like ver like mentally curl up in a ball <laughs> you know yeah i got you i got you and so the question was like am i not wearing the right clothes and basically did something happen that i don't have control over now my question is that mm. something that happens is it something that you don't have control over that just happens in the earth or is it something that happens to you that you don't have control over that is not good in the eyes of people uh specifically to me yeah that that i don't have control over yeah and, and you know what even like back like when i would because even as a kid i wasn't really up up on like trends or anything like that and so i when i was a kid i would actually always feel like i was behind on everything like i wasn't in on on the know of like what was actually happening currently in it at that time and so i always felt behind from that aspect for sure as a as a kid you know now as an adult i i peeled the layers back so much where those things don't hold value like it just i don't care <laughs> of course i'm an adult now but at, at that age though you're looking to connect with people to feel safe you, you know we're as humans we're social creatures literally for safety like we we're like herd animals in that sense um and so you know at that time i would feel those feelings because I, I wouldn't feel connected with people at, at that point, you know, 
Um, and at that time it was based off whatever social things were going on or trends or whatever like that. Because when you're a kid, you connect with those things like, Oh, okay. Like you feel connected if you're all wearing the same thing or blah, 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 which as a, as a short, quick story between, um, grade six through half of sixth grade up to eighth, um, I went to a charter school and we wore uniforms there. I, I felt crazy safe. Because there was like no different, we're like literally all the same. And so that's when I felt like, oh, okay, I feel safe. And I was like, I was very chill. I see. That's so interesting. So when that, when that feeling pops up nowadays, what is the thought and belief behind it? Since you've kind of dealt with the, am I not wearing the right thing? Did something happen? Mm -hmm. I don't have control over. What are the thoughts and beliefs behind it now when that feeling pops up? So uh, though it's, though it's rarely, if it does pop up because it, it does from, from the time to time, it's, it's at times where I'm completely not conscious, like meaning like I am not in tune with me at all. And it's literally like, like biologically, my, my body or my mind is rerouting to a, a pattern that it was so used to doing as a kid, you know? And so for me being just extremely conscious of it is how I was like unwiring that. But uh, but it's not easy. Like you gotta be conscious and it takes that it's hard <laughs> because, um, especially at the very beginning of that process, because it, because a lot of times it's like, it's the same as like driving. And then you look up and you're like, hold on. I, I just drove 20 minutes. I don't, I don't even remember these 20 minutes. And a lot of times that happens with our day-to-day -day life of just not being conscious of just, just anything. Cause we're just on our, uh, doing our to-do list or anything like that. And so, yeah, I, I'd say just being super conscious has been what's helped kind of like peel to peel that off over time. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. And so given that the feeling pops up scarcely, it sounds like you've dealt with it for the most part, but still going to ask this question. Yeah. Do you have any actions that happen, whether it be daily, weekly, monthly, or annually, these actions pop up every now and then that really stem from this feeling or stem from this belief are you saying like like almost like triggers yeah not triggers but so a trigger happens the feeling happens and then an action happens as a result of that feeling okay so you're so asking like, if i was like um if i had a limiting belief that i wasn't good enough right mm -hmm. and it's not the trigger it's not my somebody telling me i'm not good enough but what actions do I do after I think I'm not good enough that reinforce the fact that I'm not good enough? Like it might be not yeah. asking for that raise, not doing whatever, you know? I see. I see what you mean. Yeah, no, I, I mean, um, so back then my action was to literally just, of course, feel it and just sit with it and react to it, which at that time, my reaction would be shutting up, trying to look as small as possible, et cetera. You know, now um, it's different. It's, it's, if I do feel, feel that feeling, my action item is actually to, to sit with it, like actually feel it all, like feel exactly how I'm feeling, just be super conscious of it. And, um, and just even by doing that, I'm allowing myself to actually process it. And, and then even just with having that internal conversation of like questioning, okay, well, why am I feeling that way? And then just thinking about it or walking and, and working through it. You usually, by even for me questioning that or a process of questioning is actually how I peel back the layers to find what the root is. And a lot of times, sometimes, especially with something like that, there's no actual root cause other than, uh, other than biologically my body creating that feeling. And then I have to, and then I have to intellect, like intellectually actually kind of work through it and understand, okay, is, is there actually something there or, was it a reaction like literally from my body that's making me feel this, this type of way? Um, because yeah, I mean, I have seen it for sure where there's, there's things that mentally our bodies or minds are just, they're, they're used to, they have patterns. And especially if they're developed from, from childhood, um, typically by your mid twenties, your early thirties, you start to, to see the patterns and you're like, well, I gotta, well, where the heck is this stuff coming from? You know? Yeah. And so, so, but for me, what's helped is just doing a, a natural question and answer internal conversation. 
especially if I'm like walking or something like that. And that's what helps me for sure to kind of peel back the layers on that. Gotcha. Gotcha. There we go. There we go. Well, we got one last question for you. Cool. And so before I ask this question, I kind of want to frame it. Yeah. So Alex Hormozzi talked about the fact that the difference between manipulation and help is intent. And I think what he means by that is that manipulation and help, you're both influencing people in mm -hmm. both of those scenarios, but one is more selfish of like, I want you to get, I want you to do something that I want you to do. And that's more manipulation. And then help is more like, I see that there's something you want to do and I want to help you get there. So how can we break your beliefs to help you get there? Yeah. Now there's a common saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I actually found out from Dr. Alan Leica, who was a guest on the show, that you can make a horse drink. You just have to salt its oats. Wild. Now, I want <laughs> you to think of a person with a really fixed mindset, not willing to accept help, not willing to accept change, but they're discontent with their life. They want something more. Maybe they haven't admitted it to themselves, mm -hmm. but they're not okay with where they're at. How can we, you and I, create an environment to salt their oats and help them change their life, not make the choice for them because they yeah. have to make that choice, but salt their oats with the environment we create around them. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really, really good question. Um, that is a really good question. I've, so I, as an example, I'll share this example. Um, uh, the the past probably uh between four to six months i've i've had certain friends come to me with whether they have um uh problems with uh a wife or siblings or blah 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 or, or et cetera et cetera and stuff like that and um it, it's always been relationship based but there's always there's a conflict um and and a feeling of being like feeling disconnected and um that feeling of feeling disconnected really at, at the root cause is because someone in that relationship doesn't feel emotionally safe like the, and that's why you'll hear someone like say like oh, i don't feel connected with that person but really it's kind of saying like i don't feel comfortable with them like i don't feel and really what that means is i don't feel safe i don't feel like i could be myself i feel like i got to have a guard up etc um the only reason why i bring that up is because with with your question of of kind of how to, to be able to create an environment for people to kind of be able to be open to, um, receiving that type of help and, and get having their, their oats, oats salted in that sense too, is to make them feel safe, to make them feel connected. Because if you don't, if you don't make them feel safe and they don't feel connected, they're not going to have, they're not going to say certain things. They're not going to have certain conversations with you, um, et cetera. And so I think that that's the first step i i don't know how to construct that but as far as an outcome it'd be like it would have to take um an environment where people feel safe yeah emotionally that like that for sure has to happen because i mean they'll be the thing is like people will lie at it just protection they'll be like oh yeah no i feel good but the thing is like they don't but they're saying it because it's their defense too like they're like in their head they're like i do i'm not gonna get into this right now like Yep. They're not gonna they're they they're not gonna understand me, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And so um, so yeah, just you know, feeling safe. Um listening is hard, but we have if, if we have to listen and they have to genuinely know that we're actually actively listening, not just saying like, oh yeah, I'm listening. Like you gotta really listen and then like say back exactly what they said to so that they know that you actually understood and if and and if uh, you said something wrong, they have the chance to correct you and say, no, what I mean is blah, 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 you know? And so, um, so it's a process. It's not easy, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, starting with being emotionally safe and having that connection, uh, I was, would say is the starting point. I love it. I love it. Well, Bobby, that's all we got for you. Is there anything else uh, that you want to chat about before we sign off? Awesome. No, no. Thank you, Timmy, again, for the opportunity and the, the conversation. I re have really enjoyed this. Um, again, yeah, I'd say as a, as a last, a last point to end with, um, uh, which is be to, to continue to be very, just for people to try it, just, you know, 
have internal conversations with yourself. I feel like a lot of times we're not having those conversations internally and we're always seeking answers, answers from like um, friends or family and stuff like that, which they can give you advice. But the thing is at the end of the day, they're not in your specific shoes feeling exactly what you, what you're feeling. And, um, and so, so yeah, I would just, I would just encourage just like having that internal conversation and kind of what you had shared earlier today too, was, you know, have, uh, be compassionate with yourself when you're having those internal conversations. Like if you did, if you messed up, don't be like, Oh, you idiot. Why'd you blah, blah, blah. Like, again, if you talk to your friend like that, your friend would be like, dude, I'm not going to be your friend anymore, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, I'd say that's, uh, as one point just to, to focus on and something, a way to something to keep in mind in your day to day. For sure. Sounds good. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. No, thank you. Uh, Timmy, it was my pleasure. Of course. And thank you guys for watching. If you liked what Bobby had to say, make sure to check him out. All the links to do so will be down in the show notes. We appreciate you and we will see you on the next one. On that note, we're out.